Good yontif, everybody. As we begin our service, I'll ask you to please rise. Autumn light and maple leaves, bluest sky, new wash dawn, chorus of birds southward bound, deepest red chrysanthemums, earth's first rain, smoky breeze. Fresh picked apples, honey sweet, golden morning, and the world reborn. Here we gather to greet the year, invitation to improve our lives, joyful season and judgment day. Know this truth. We are free to change. Let the shofar summon us home. Make this moment our return to you now in celebration. Join, open us to the gifts of life. You may be seated. I um, try not to wear white after Labor Day. <laughs> but sometimes you have to make an exception. This past year, of course, was all about exceptions. Our kids stayed up too late, they watched too much TV, we tried to unglue ourselves from the news, from Facebook, from Netflix, easier said than done. We were out of sync and too often had a sinking feeling. We sought out joy wherever and whenever we could, splurged, binged, it's true, joy is waning. How can we come to this day with joy, knowing how much sadness exists in our world? As fires rage, as floods run rampant, as terrorists preach violence, as extremism is very much alive. As the battle over reproductive rights continues, and as a pandemic rages on still. How on earth do we dare consider all that Rosh Hashanah would have us consider? Hope, possibility, and faith. How do we even go there this year? And how do we go there in a way that's genuine? I would offer that these holy days can be a balm to our ailing spirit, even if they don't mend the many ills of our society. I would offer that these days can be a break from the torment and turmoil, even if they don't create lasting peace in a blood-stained world. I believe that these days can give us the motivation and courage we need to take on the year ahead, and to do so not from a place of apology or defensiveness or haplessness, but with the conviction we need and our kids and grandkids need to see from us the commitment we, the Jewish people, have to truth and right, justice, compassion, all of which we must bring to the world as urgently as ever. Malcolm Gladwell writes, I, see, I saw trees bend in a howling wind, their branches screaming, and I thought, that's too painful. I heard rain beat an angry rhythm on a rooftop and I thought, that can't last. I saw my reflection in a river flowing swiftly, quietly, without end, and I realized, that's what we do. Here's to growing like trees into a new year, with roots dug deep and branches ready to bend as needed providing shelter and shade for one another, and taking in as much light as we possibly can. We join in singing Ma Tovu, page 110. <laughs>
On page 112, we join in the blessing for the study of Torah, thanking God that we live in a time and place where we're free to study Torah and live lives of Torah. As we say, Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Asher Kedeshanu B'mitzvotav, Vitzivanu La'asok B'divrei Torah. Blessed are you, Adonai our God, supreme power of the universe. You sanctify our lives with mitzvot and give us the sacred obligation of learning and living Torah. Our service continues on page 120. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam asher yatsar et adam b'chokmah v'aravo nekavim nekavim chalulim chalulim. Blessed are you, Holy One, who has formed the human body with wisdom, an intricate network of channels, vessels, and openings. This wondrous structure and the flow of life within us allows us to serve you and give thanks. Let us cherish this gift of flesh and blood, honor it as God's creation. Baruch ata Adonai, rofecho basar umafli la'aso. We praise you, Holy One, for wondrous acts of creation and healing. We join together in Nisim B'chol Yom, thanking God for those everyday miracles that dot our lives. Page 124. Baruch Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Asher Natan L'Tivina, Lahafin Ben Yom Uvein Laila. Baruch Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Hokeach Ibrim. Baruch Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Matir Asurim. Baruch Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Zoket Kefufim. Baruch Atah Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Rokah Ha'aretz Amayim. Baruch Atah Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Sh'asah Likot Zorkim. Baruch Atah Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Hamachim B'Tzadei Kaver. Baruch Atah Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Malki Sharuhim. Baruch Atah Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Hanatin Le'ev Koach. Baruch Atah Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Hama'avir Shainan Me'enai, Utnuma Me'atatah. Baruch Atah Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Sha'asani B'Tselem Elohim. Ata Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Sh'asani Ben Chorim. Baruch Ata Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Sh'asani Yisrael. Baruch Ata Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Ozer Yisrael Bikuda. Baruch Ata Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, we do turn together to page 131. God is my light and my refuge secure. Whom shall I fear? God is the stronghold of my life. Of whom should I be afraid? Just one thing I have asked of God, only this do I seek to dwell in God's house all the days of my life, to behold divine sweetness and beauty, and to gaze in delight at God's temple. We do continue on page 135, where we find Psalm 150. Hallelujah, be 
for Creatures, your goodness renews the creation each day. Infinite, varied, and rich are your works, divine artist, all of them wrought with wisdom. The whole earth is teeming with life. 
awestruck by the universe, work of your hands. Let all life bless you, praise you, and celebrate the beauty of your lights. Or Chadash al Tzion Ta'ir, Ulanu Meherala Oro. Light on Zion, may we soon be privileged to share in that light. Baruch Atadonai Yotzer HaMe'orot. Our praise to you, Adonai, creator of the cosmic lights. Turning to page 164, we join now in our song of freedom, Mi Chamocha. Oh, 
continue now with our tefillah found beginning on page 166. Please rise.
Seated. We do turn now in our prayer book to page 175. day and its holiness, for this day is a throne of goodness and power. you of yours. Let this day be a throne of forgiveness, for today we are the accountants of our souls, the navigators of our hearts, seeking wholeness and new direction. And we seek you through signs of your presence in the arc of sacred history. God of ages, God of this day, as you were with our mothers and fathers, be with us as well. A still small voice will be heard. Angels in a world of fear and trembling will say, Behold the day of judgment, for they too are judged, and your eyes, even they, are not blameless. All who come into the world pass before you like sheep before their shepherd. As a shepherd considers the flock when it passes beneath the staff, you count and consider every life, you set bounds, you decide destiny, you inscribe judgments.
On Rosh Hashanah is written, on the fast of Yom Kippur, this is sealed. How many will pass away from this world? How many will be born into it? Who will live and who will die? Who will reach the ripeness of age? Who will be taken before their time? Who by fire and who by water? Who by war and who by beast? Who by famine and who by drought? and who by stoning, who will rest, and who will wander, who will be tranquil, and who will be troubled, who will be calm, and who tormented, who will live in poverty, and who in prosperity, who will be humbled, and who exalted. Turn to the right path through prayer and righteous giving, we can transcend the harshness of the decree. You are everything that we praise you for, slow to anger, quick to forgive. You do not wish the death of sinners, but urge them to return from their ways and live. Until the day of death, you wait for them, you accept them at once if they return. Since you created us, you know our impulses. We are but flesh and blood. We who are mortal, our origin is dust, and so is our end. We wear out our lives to get our bread like broken vessels, like withered grass, like a flower that must fade, a shadow moving on, a cloud passing by, mere dust. But for you, ever-living sovereign, time has no limits. Your presence, unbounded by days and years, is everywhere, a glorious mystery none can decipher. Your name is worthy of you, and you are worthy of your name. And our name you have linked with yours. Please rise, everyone. Kishim Shemachtishim Ho Tobishme Marom Kakatu Valyahan Nevieha Vikarab Zeel Zeevamar Katosh 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 Atomai Sivaot Adirenu Adonai, Adonenu Ma'adir, Shimcha Behol Ha'aretz. Baruch Hilu Adonai, Moshienu vehu yashmienu Virachamav leine kol chai Ani Adonai lohechem Imloch Adonai leolam Elohai yichsiyon Tor vator nagir kor lecha Ule netzak netzachim kirushat cha naktish Veshiv cha cha lo henu mi pinu lo yamush Leolam vaed Ki el melech gadol vikadosh ata may be seated. Our service continues on page 189. 
So we imagined ourselves, vineyard of God, a thriving olive tree, fair and verdant, laden with fruit. While the world despised or ignored us, our sages gave us a their oil only when pressed, so the people of Israel shows its greatness when oppressed. Other liquids mix with one another, olive oil does not. So Israel stands apart, a people dwelling alone. The nations demanded us and cast us away. We took shelter in stories of honor and love. They called us the vanquished, rejected by God, but we knew ourselves blessed and cherished by you. We carry our own our dream of Kavod, a place of respect among the nations, life and strength for our people, light and peace for our Holy Land. Page 196. Yeratse, Yishma, Vipaked, Yazacher, Vichronenu, Vikotenu. Our God and God of the generations before us, may a memory of us ascend and come before you. May it be heard and seen by you, winning your favor and reaching your awesomeness. Together with the memory of our ancestors, the memory of your sacred city, Jerusalem, the memory of your people, the family of Israel, may we be remembered for safety, well-being, and for compassion, for life and for peace on this day of remembrance. Zochreinu Adonai Eloheinu Bo Litova, Amen. Vakdeinu Vo Livacha, Amen. Vahoshienu Vo Lichaim, Amen. Eternal our God, remember us, Amen. Be mindful of us and redeem us, Amen. For a life of goodness, a life of blessing, Amen. Page 200. We are stiff-necked and stubborn. Teach us to bend before you. Convinced we're right, entrenched in our own perspective, we resist your call to repent. Convinced we're self-sufficient, entrenched in the illusion of control, we resist your call to humility. Convinced we can have it all, entrenched in the dream of mastering the world, we resist your call to wake up. Today you summon us out of our arrogance, out of rigidity, fantasy, shallowness, self-deception. Teach us to bend our knees, to bow our heads before the mystery, to realize our frailty and our finitude. Teach us to make you melech, sovereign in our life, to align ourselves with your goodness and truth. We would not bow before Pharaoh, we would not bow before the Persian Lord. We would not submit to any power on earth or give ourselves to any material thing. But we, the Jewish people, stiff-necked, stubborn to the end, today we bow before you. Continuing on page 202, please rise.
God who is ours and God of our fathers and mothers, lead us to holiness through your mitzvot. May each of us find a portion of Torah that is ours. You bestow such goodness. Teach us to be satisfied and to know the joy of your salvation. Help us to serve you truly with purity of heart, for you are a faithful God whose truth stands forever. Baruch atadonai. Melech al kol haaretz mekadesh Yisrael v'yom hazikaron. Our praise to you, Eternal One, whose power pervades all the earth. You bring holiness to the people Israel and to this day of remembrance. Thank you. 
Modim anachnu lach, she'atahu Adonai Eloheinu, velohe avotenu v'imotenu le'olam va'ed. Sor chayenu magen yishenu atahu l'dor v'dor. God who is ours, God of all generations, to you we are grateful forever. Rock and protector of our lives, your saving power endures from age to age. We thank you and tell the tale of your praise, your power in our lives, your caring for our souls, the constant miracle of your kindness. Morning, noon, and night, we call you goodness, for your compassion never ends. We call you mercy, for your love has no limit. We call you hope, now and for all time. And for all these gifts, God of majesty, may your name come to be blessed and praised. Our gratitude, a daily offering until the end of time. Inscribe your covenant partners for a life of goodness. And may all life resound with gratitude and faith in praise of your name. God, you free us and strengthen us. Baruch Ata Adonai, Hatov Shimcha Uvachadna Elehodot. Blessed are you, Adonai, whose goodness deserves thanks and praise. We will continue now with a prayer for peace, and we do indeed pray for peace to prevail in a world of such violence, such pain, a world of strife and prejudice. We come here now praying that in this new year, when all things become possible once more, that peace might become real in the land of Israel, in the many places ransacked by war, in the countless parts of our world that have been undone by religious persecution, racist policy, extremist leadership. I pray that we manage to hold in our heart all of the peoples, every person, and not just on this sacred day. I pray as well that the pain of others be a part of not only our prayers, but a call to act for us, that we might be God's partner in creating a world of more kindness, more generosity, more understanding, and much more love. We sing Sim Shalom, page 216. Thank <laughs> you. 
We will pause now for a few moments for the sake of our own personal prayers. Over the last few years, we have welcomed an added family to the Bema to share some of their story with us as we begin a new year. It's a chance to hear about ways that our community members live their Judaism. We're just supporting our community in so many important ways. This past year, they celebrated Dylan's confirmation, Logan becoming a bar mitzvah, Talon will become a bar mitzvah just a few months from now. They are wonderful human beings, and I am delighted to share the Bema with them this morning. Shana Tova, <laughs> Rabbi David, Cantor Sandy, and fellow congregants, it is a joy 
to be here with you today, in person, on this Rosh Hashanah. The view from up here on the Bima is quite incredible. As I look out at all of you, and I see our resiliency and the progress we've made during this past year. When Rabbi David called me and invited us to speak at today's service, we decided to come before you as a family, because family is truly the essence of our connections to Ada. My name is Tara, and this is my husband, Greg, and our three children, Dylan, Logan, and Talon. We became a part of this community 14 years ago, back in 2007, when Dylan was only two years old and Logan was an infant at six months old. We moved into our home in the cul-de-sac that borders the parking lot of this building. One of the first things I did in between unpacking boxes was to put Dylan in his stroller and Logan into the Baby Bjorn carrier and walk across the cul-de-sac through the Attic parking lot and into the early childhood center doors to enroll Dylan as a little duckling in the twos classroom. <laughs> that walk became our daily routine. And when Logan became two years old, we continued that same path, following Dylan as the leader with Logan in the stroller and Talon strapped into the baby carrier on my chest. And as my boys grew, by the time it was Talon's turn to attend preschool at the ECC, I enrolled him before he even turned two years old. Our walk, this building, and the people inside of it became such an integral part of our daily lives that it was only natural that the boys would begin their religious schooling here at the age of five. From the upstairs windows of our home, I have a direct line of sight to the ECC doors. And as my boys grew and matured, they began taking their walks to Ada while I watched from inside our house. Teen nights, choir practices, Shabbats, visits and chats with Heidi, in the main office when the boys drop things off to the attic office for me. The same walks taken, my same view from our upstairs window. I look to Adif as my dependable neighbor, even using this parking lot as my own front yard when the boys want to ride their bikes, skateboard, or jog. Our path to Adif and my view of this building is a comforting constant. Attic is a steadfast and robust haven, my family's safe place in this world of uncertainty and our stability in this time of change. Hi, I'm Dylan. As mom said, I've been running around the attic hallways for as long as I can remember. Even after the conclusion of my religious schooling, I continued coming here on Sundays to be a madrich in the classrooms and help lead tefillah services. These are some of my favorite times at Adif, along with singing in the adult choir and reading Torah at every opportunity. I find myself so drawn to this place that I even landed a job working here at the ECC summer camp this past summer. There's a familiarity in being here that feels like the next closest place to home. That feeling of comfort was most valuable to me throughout last year, at a time when the pandemic was very distressful for me. During that time, my confirmation class consisted of about a dozen students that I have grown up with here, and we were able to meet in person on Wednesday evenings for a good portion of the year. In those meetings, Rabbi David guided us as we explored different parts of Judaism and delved deeper into topics that were more complex 
and thought-provoking, subjects that foster a stronger understanding of the ways in which we interact with the world around us as young adults and as Jewish people. I look back on those meetings and I remember feeling like I was part of something significant, and it gave me evenings to look forward to during days that were lonely and draining spent in front of a computer for virtual school. Those confirmation classes gave me contact with my friends and peers, and they broadened my views of the world during a time when I couldn't physically go to many places. I carry those strong connections with me, and I am eager to begin post-confirmation classes this year. And once again, I will turn to Adith, our path, this building, and the people inside of it to support me as I journey through this year. <clears throat> Hi, I'm Greg. Like Tara and Dylan, I've enjoyed our walks to Adith, this building, and the people inside of it. But the connection that has comforted me the most came in the form of a few simple text messages. When COVID shut down the world, like many small businesses, my own business came to a terrifying stop with no clear answers to the questions of how long it would last and what to do in between. Like all of you, I was gravely concerned about the uncertainty of the future and how to navigate it. Rabbi David was the first person I reached out to. I didn't text him for answers. I simply needed a good listener and a level-headed confidant. When I felt like days were bad, I texted him my feelings, and he validated them for me. He didn't sugarcoat it, the situation. He didn't give me a religious explanation, but rather he chatted with me as my friend. Those friendly text messages between us became a weekly check-in, and I came to view them as my comfort and constant. It made me feel good to have a friend to talk to who understood my situation without judgment. So, if you would like to text Rabbi David directly about your situation and get non-judgmental input, he's available every day, any hour except Shabbat and High Holidays. And his cell phone number is, if you're ready for it. <laughs> no, just kidding. Hi, I'm Logan. Adith has always felt like a second home to me too. I just became a bar mitzvah recently, this past June 5th, and it was the most incredible evening of my life. It was well worth the wait, the very long wait. <laughs> my bar mitzvah was originally going to take place on March 21st of 2020, but COVID turned the world upside down, and New Jersey shut down just four days before my event. First, we cried a lot. Then we rescheduled and rescheduled and rescheduled and rescheduled and rescheduled for a total of five times. On one of those rescheduled dates, we reached out in despair to the Brophy family to ask for one of the biggest favors we could have ever asked. We asked Xavier to share his bar mitzvah service with me. With an incredible act of selflessness, Xavier did not hesitate to say yes. There is no showing of greater support and empathy from our Adith community than that. That date came and went. <laughs> <laughs> and while typically a B'nai Mitzvah student only has about 35 tutoring lessons, I trudged onward to have a total of 60 tutoring lessons with Cantor Sandy. Those meetings with Cantor Sandy were a constant in my weeks during the pandemic. They were a fixed block of time with a person I could depend on during a period when many other things felt very uncertain. Cantor Sandy rallied for me for two years strong, diligently preparing me for the day that would eventually become the greatest day of my life so far. My experience has further affirmed that our path, this building, and the people inside of it 
are truly incredible. Hi, I'm Talon. I will become a bar mitzvah almost seven months from now, on April 2nd, 2022. I've already started my weekly meetings with Cantor Sandy, and I am very excited about my upcoming milestone. Although once again, we will be celebrating this mitzvah under ever-changing circumstances. I know that, like Logan, I will have the support of the Edith community to cheer me on. So from our family to all of yours on this Rosh Hashanah, we wish you good health, happiness, and hope in the sweet new year. May you all find peace in comfort and comfort in your path this building, and the people inside of it. Shana Tova. A special thank you again to the amazing Sugar family. I always joke with them. They are so sweet, <laughs> which they are. Our service will continue now as we turn in our prayer book to page 223. Please rise.
Aminu Malkenu, Rabbeinu Besefer Chayim Tovim. Aminu Malkenu, enter our names in the book of lives well lived. Aminu Malkenu, Chadesh Aleinu, Shana Tova. Aminu Malkenu, renew for us the year of goodness. Aminu Malkenu, Panenu Vaanenu, Ki Ein Banu Maasim. Ase Imanu, Staka, Machesed, Behoshienu. Abinu Malkinu, Almighty and Merciful, answer us with grace, for our deeds are wanting. Save us through acts of justice and love.
may be seated. We do come back now to the story of the binding of Isaac, this haunting tale of a father and a son who walk together to the top of Mount Moriah so that Abraham can sacrifice Isaac in the name of so-called faith. It's a gruesome story, a story presumably about piety, but ultimately about the dangers inherent in fanaticism, patriarch who allows God's voice to call out louder than the voice of his own son and wife. And it's a story we struggle with year after year after year. But maybe that's the point. That as Abraham and Isaac walk up the mountain time and again, we walk with them, even though we know how the story ends, it always disturbs us. The rabbis of the Talmud contend that God would never allow Abraham to sacrifice young Isaac in the end. He was never going to allow such an act on God's own watch. But in reading it, we're not so sure. And the rabbi's explanation feels apologetic, if anything. Tractate Ta'anid of the Talmud notes that while other nations of the day resorted to such horrific tests, we were never meant to. It was all a big show to maybe impress neighboring peoples. Well, that explanation also feels apologetic. For years, we've grappled with this story. What does it say about God? What does it say about Abraham that he would seemingly listen to God's impossible command? What does it say about Isaac that he would follow? How is this a commentary on parenting, on conformity, on faith? What does it say about extremism, about Judaism, or about religion in general? From this very podium, I have shared so many angles with you. And this year, as I think about this story with you, I think at the end of the day, it's a story that reminds us that being Jewish sometimes is just hard. The stories are hard. The calendar is hard. And maybe these days it's particularly tough when there's such anti-Semitism, such anti-Israel sentiment. It's just not easy to be a Jew these days. A blessing, yes. A gift, definitely. But not easy. To quote our friend Tevya in Fiddler on the Roof, I know, I know we're your chosen people, but once in a while, can't you choose someone else? <laughs> After we grapple with this story each year, we take a deep breath as Isaac survives, as Abraham somehow passes the test, the father and the son grow closer and perhaps even closer to God in the process. They've experienced the episode together, frightened and unsure, and come down the mountain to move forward with greater verve and a greater sense of purpose now. And we come down from the mountain as well, having learned once more about all of it, about who to follow and what to say and what not to say. We learn that this Torah is ours, thank God, to wrestle with, to share with our children year after year after year and think about our place within it and what it means to have it speak to our heart year after year in an ever complicated world. If you would like to follow along as we now hear again the story of the binding of Isaac, you can do so in your prayer book.
Our Torah readers this morning will be Heather Wargo, Karen Fetterman, and Robin Schaefer. With the honor of our first Aliyah to the Torah, it's my pleasure to welcome forward Bruce Grossman. The honor of our next Aliyah, it's my pleasure to welcome forward Harriet Cohen. Ha 
Please rise, everyone. Hannah 
he would give a special portion, portion because he loved Hana and the Eternal had closed her womb. And her rival wife would taunt her cruelly to make her tremble with grief for the Eternal had closed her womb. And so it was year after year when she would go up to the house of the Eternal, she taunted her and she would cry and not eat. And Elkanah, her husband, said to her, Hannah, why do you cry and why do you not eat? And why are you disheartened? Am I not worth more to you than ten sons? And Hannah arose after eating and drinking at Shiloh, while Eli the priest sat upon the throne near the doorposts of the temple of the Eternal. And she, bitter to the core, prayed to the Eternal, weeping and crying. And she vowed and said, Eternal of heaven, of heaven's host, if you will truly see your servant's affliction and remember me and not forget your servant and give your servant a son, I will give him to the Eternal all the days of his life. And no razor shall be lifted to his head. And as her praying before the Eternal intensified, Eli watched her mouth. And Hannah, she was speaking only in her heart, thought through her lips, were mo though, her, though her lips were moving, her voice could not be heard. So Eli thought she was a drunk. And Eli said to her, how long will you persist in the drunkenness? Put away your wine, get rid of it. And Hannah answered and said, no, my Lord, a woman of sorrow am I. I drank neither wine nor spirits, but poured out my soul before the eternal. Do not take your servant for a worthless woman. All this time I have spoken from the heart, of, from the depth of my anger and from the greatness of my grievance. Then Eli answered and said, go in peace and may the God of Israel grant the request you have made. And she said, may your servant find grace in your sight. And the woman went on her way and she ate and her face was no longer as it had been. And they awoke early in the morning and worshiped before the eternal. And they said, and they went home, returning to Ramah. And Elkanah knew Hannah, his wife, and the Eternal remembered her. And so it was that at the turn of the year, Hannah conceived and then gave birth to a son. And she called him Samuel, because I requested him from the Eternal. And the man, Elkanah, and his whole household went up to make an annual offerings to the Eternal and to fulfill his vow. But Hannah did not go up, for she said to her husband, until the boy is weaned, then I will bring him. Once he appears before the eternal, he will stay there forever. Elkanah, her husband, said to her, do what you think is best. Wait until you have weaned him. Surely the eternal will fulfill what, you, what your mouth had uttered. So the woman stayed and nursed her son until she had weaned him. When she weaned him, she took him up with her with three year old with a three year old bull, one ephah of flour and a skin of wine, and brought him to the eternal, to the house of the eternal, to Shiloh. And the boy was young. And they slaughtered slaughtered the bull and brought the boy to Eli. And she said, Please, my lord, as you live, my lord, I am the woman who stood here with you praying to the Eternal. It was for this boy that I prayed, and the Eternal granted my request. I, in turn, grant what the Eternal asked of him. As long as he lives, he is dedicated to the Eternal. And there they worshiped the Eternal. Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu melech ha'olam, zur kol halo amim, zadik bakol hadorot, ha'el ha'ne'eman, ha'omer ze'oseh, ha'mdaber umkayim, shakol devoret, emet v'atzedek, al ha'torah, v'al ha'avodah, v'al ha'ndim, Yal yom hazikoron haze, shenetatawanu adonai eloheinu, likuvod, likuvod ufi, ufi, al akol adonai eloheinu anakimotimah. 
Un barking ota, yet barking shrinka, but the folk high pani, the little one by egg. Uber ha emet, the kayam la ad, Baruch ata adonai. Mela apo ha aris mikadesh, Yisrael yog viyom hazikaram. We turn together to page 267. God of remembrance, remember the covenant of our ancestors. We reaffirm it today. Remember we are a people of noble ideals. Help us attain them. Remember all your people, all the nations on the road to peace. Bless their efforts. Remember with mercy the binding of Isaac, the sorrow of Sarah, Abraham's words, here I am. Our memory fades, but you remember all that we have forgotten. Your presence is a throne where all things matter and nothing is lost. Baruch Adonai, Zocher Habrit. Blessed are you, Adonai. You remember the covenant. You remember us. Please rise, everyone. Tekia. Shivarim Teruah. Tekia. Tekia, Shivarim. Tekia, Tekia, Tekia. Remain standing and turn to page 272.
revealed your glory, a presence in a cloud, and a people became holy when you spoke with them. Amid thunder and lightning, you made yourself known. With blasting shofar, you appeared. We turn together to page 284. Blessed are you in our lives, Adonai. You hear with love the shofar, true voice of your people Israel. Shivarim Shivarim Tekia Tekia Terua Birthday parties are memorable, each for their own reason. This party happened not far from here, in Willingboro, actually. The birthday girl, Shira, was smiling a big smile all day. You would do the same if it were your birthday. After all, to be surrounded by people you adore, to have one singular day all about you, not your sister or your little cousins, to have everyone's attention at last, amid a life that can feel frantic, to be able to almost feel the love coursing in your veins. She had waited so long for that. How often do you really turn seven anyway? <laughs> she wore an outfit she'd saved especially for that day, she was missing her front teeth. Then again, most people at the party were. <laughs> when you have a November birthday, you're never sure what the weather will be, especially in New Jersey. It could be 70 and sunny. It could be 20 and snowing. On this day, it was a perfect 60 degrees. Cool and clear, as good as autumn gets. Her friends arrived one by one and ran around in the backyard. When it was time, they came in for cake. Parents took pictures with their bulky cameras, so typical of the 80s. And then it happened, like a dream. Or was it a nightmare? It was hard to say at first. They heard it before they saw it. The sound of exhaust and distant shouting. There was commotion, confusion, even some fear, if the girls were being honest. But then it came into view. First a spot of color, then it was there in its full glory. Did their little eyes deceive them? Had the sugar made them weary? No, it was real. And there it was, a hot air balloon 
giant and bright in the sky, and it was descending fast on their neighborhood. Paige McConnell sings, waiting patiently for the chance to see, doing what I can, seems that most events aren't planned. Well, this hadn't been planned at all, of course. Pin the tail on the donkey, yes. Musical chairs, definitely. But not this, never this. How could you plan for the emergency landing of a hot air balloon at your birthday party? <laughs> not even the boldest childlike imagination could have conjured even the possibility. Well, they dropped everything when they saw it. Forks sat at the side of cake crumbs. Soda spilled on the living room carpet as if in slow motion. Shoes sat unattended in the corner. They took what they could, they left what they had to, and they ran for the balloon. A cavalry of disbelief and wonder, ponytails sailing in the air, looking at each other wide-eyed as they went. They followed, and they followed. Where would it land? How would it land? Until it came down easily in a nearby lot, dropping out of the sky right there into suburban New Jersey. It sat, and it sat, and they watched, and they watched. And in time, eventually, it took off once more, lifting into the sky and out of view as if it never happened at all. What a birthday for Shira. <laughs> what would ever live up to this? How could any future birthday, hers or anyone's really, even attempt to compare? When she awoke that morning, could she have known what the day would bring? I've been thinking about the idea that we so often fail in our attempt to script the events of our own life, let alone the world around us. How there are so often, maybe more so than ever, plot twists we could have never imagined, some we welcome, some we don't. In the time of COVID, we've all had to reevaluate the idea that we have complete control over our own narrative. We learned this past year to make plans loosely. We learned we can't control the school board or whether others choose to get vaccinated. We can't control the decisions of other parents or children who are not our own. Often we can't even control our own children. We certainly can't control the actions in and around our beloved Israel. We can't control our neighbors or what others do on social media. We can't control those who choose hostility and enmity. We can't control extremists. We can't control how others define patriotism or Zionism or Judaism. We can't control tomorrow, let alone today. To quote the oldest Jewish adage of them all, man plans, God laughs. Or another certain sage, seldom turns out the way it does in the song. I've thought a lot this past year about the trajectory of my own life. Maybe we all did that a bit during this saga we've endured. It was a time of isolation, but it was also a time of reflection. I thought about how I could have predicted so little of it. If you would have told me when I was 15, a teenager at Cherry Hill East, that I would be here with you now spending our 10th high holidays together. I'm not sure what I would have said. Or that I'd be five years post-cancer with an extraordinary wife and three precious children. What would your 15-year-old self have trouble believing about the current you? Could my beloved Lisa Bieber David have imagined as an 11-year-old at Camp Harlem, gazing up at that iconic chapel on the hill, nervous and unsure during her first summer away from home, that she would, some 30 years later, be in charge of the entire place, 
250 staff, 600 campers, a massive network of donors and alumni, and lead them all through the deadliest pandemic in a century. Could my father, arriving at Temple Emmanuel in the summer of 1974, his sideburns long, <laughs> his Midwestern accent thick, his experience non-existent, could he have known that he would stay not the two years prescribed by his initial contract, but 47 years in the end, through generations, through upheaval, through change, moving from Cooper River to the corner of Crescent and Springdale, could he have imagined that the first time he ever attended a high holy day service led by his son, would be today. <laughs> he and my mom are right there in the front. No autographs, please. <laughs> you have your examples too, I know you do. You didn't think you would go this way. You weren't expecting it either. The news, the sickness, the sadness, the surprises, the personal and professional transitions, one after another. Who could have ever imagined? I want to think that the Jewish story gives us perspective. I know it granted us perspective this past year as we navigated all the setbacks and disappointments, all the toil. I think here of all the Jewish communities over time whose lives were upended by harsh realities they never saw coming. Realities far more devastating than any pandemic even. Relatives of yours and mine who faced historic turmoil and widespread loss of life. Relatives who saw murder with their own frightened eyes. Whether in the Middle Ages, when crusaders raised Jewish villages across Europe, or the horrors our brothers and sisters saw as they fled the 19th century pogroms that decimated Jewish life in Russia. It was about these pogroms that Bialik wrote, the agony of their lives, the terror of their death. Wherefore, O Lord, and why? There's nothing there save silences that hang from rafters. Of course, we add to these historic atrocities the still impossible fact of the Holocaust not a century ago, as noted by Israeli poet Dan Pagis, here, in this transport, I, Eve, with my son Abel, if you see my other son, Cain, son of Adam, tell him that I... Their lives were not only upended, their lives were unfinished. Our ancestors show us from the beyond how they, with dire bravery and unwavering conviction, held on to hope and possibility, even when life turned dark or painful so suddenly. How they insisted on believing in a benevolent God, even as God hid her face in shame. How your ancestors and mine continued to believe in prayer, even as they prayed alone. How your relatives and mine somehow kept going even as every cell of their fragile being said no more. I think of the story of Ruth, which we read each year on Shavuot. First we meet Naomi. She's lost her husband, and soon she will lose her two sons. She has two daughters-in-law that remain. Orpah returns to her own family to grieve and to begin life anew. But Ruth, Ruth chooses to remain with her staggered mother-in-law. She says, where you go, I will go. Where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people. Where you die, I will die. She is considered the first ever Jew by choice. Could Ruth have imagined living out the rest of her days with Naomi? Could Naomi have ever conjured this remarkable twist of fate? Never. 
No doubt, Ruth imagined a life of joy with her husband. And Naomi imagined lengthy visits from her grandchildren. That's the fairy tale they'd hoped for. Just as we hope for the fairy tale. Years later, Ruth will meet Boaz. They will marry and have a son, Obed. And Naomi will treat him as her own grandchild. For both Ruth and Naomi, Obed is a balm to their pain. It's surely not the script they had envisioned, but it's a beautiful script. Just as your least predicted script can be, of course, a beautiful script. The book of Ruth ends by noting that it's little Obed who will in time become a grandparent too. His grandson will become none other than King David. Here, the Jewish story goes straight through the complexity, the tragedy, the persistence inherent in human life. King David, leader of our people, musician and warrior, author of our Psalms, stems directly from all of it, as do we. It's a fairy tale, but with thorns and with turns, with highs that feel higher because there were no shortage of lows. We think too of Job, the proverbial beaten man. He's lost, and he's lost so much. As his story begins, we learn that Job is blameless and upright. He has health and wealth and a large loving family. He has it all. We then watch in horror as he loses his family, then his possessions. He grows bitter despondent, he says, what I dreaded has come upon me. He says, if my calamity were weighed, my full calamity laid on the scales, it would be heavier than the sand of the sea. He is shortly surrounded by three friends who console him, comfort him, cry with him. We are told that through it all, he doesn't lose his faith. He's angry, yes, shaken, but he lives with faith, and he grows closer to his God and to his people. The story ends by telling us that Job will move forward, even slowly, and live to see new generations rise up, children and grandchildren. He will live to the age of 140 and die content. We are not Job. We are not Ruth but we understand their stories of woe and wonder. We know what it means to live with sadness, with dreams dashed, or maybe just delayed. We know what it's like to watch the control we thought we had wrenched from our very hands. So what do we do? Now we enter a new year. So we ask, what can we control, if anything? Where can we find some level of predictability in this ever unpredictable world? I believe, actually, that we can control a lot. We can control our words, our own choices, the tzedakah we give and why, the authors we read, the heroes we venerate and raise up high for our kids to see. We can control the faith we live with, our relationship to prayer and to study, how we parent, the battles we choose to fight, the battles we don't, when we listen and when we speak up. You can choose whether to engage on Facebook or not. I say not. You can choose the values you raise up at home no matter what your neighbor or your friends or the other parents choose to do in their home. You can choose to work on that muscle that helps you to be more open-minded, more flexible, more ready to adapt, all of which we need more than ever. You can choose to be ready for the unexpected, whether in the form of hot air balloons, or news, and respond with perspective, with patience, and with the wisdom 
you too have built up over the years. Like Ruth. Like Orpa. Like Rabbi David over there. Did he imagine at 15 that he'd be sitting here now? We can't control it all, but we can choose to remember the strength we have within, the quiet voice that urges you forward even when you're not so sure. Call it your past, call it your God, call it that awesome and unmistakable spirit that burns bright within you, now and forever. Here's to a year of joy and, God willing, a year of peace. Amen. Alenu can be found on page 286. Please rise.
do remain standing. There are stars up above so far away we only see their light long, long after the star itself is gone. So it is with people that we loved. Their memories keep shining ever brightly, though their time with us is done. But the stars that light up the darkest night, these are the lights that guide us as we live our days. These are the ways we remember. And we do remember at this moment the many we've loved and lost as we join together in the hallowed words of Kadish Yatom, Mourner's Kaddish, page 292. Yitgadal the Yitgadash Shemei Rabbah, Vialma di Brach Rute, Viam Lit Malchute, Gachayechon of Yomechon, Uchaye to call Beit Israel, Vagabal Isman Kari Vimru, Yehe Shemei Rabbah, Mivorach Leolam, Lame Almaya, Yiparach, the Ishtabach, the Par, the Choman, the Itnase. Yitadar, Yitalev, Yitalal, Shemay, Dikudisha, Burithu. La Ela, Min Kol, Birchata, Vishirata. Tush Bechata, Venechemata. Dami Ran, Mialma, Vimru. Yehe, Shlama, Rabba, Min Shemaya. Vichayim, Alenu, Bial, Kol, Israel. Vimru. O Se Shalom, Bin Roma. Uya, Se Shalom. Aleinu ve'al kol Yisrael, Yimru. Amen. We'll remain standing for a closing song of Adon Olam, found on page 298. Please join us.